Welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Jim Levinson. I'm the director of Yale's Jackson Institute for Global Affairs, and I'd like to thank you for joining us for this webinar. Over the course of the next hour or so, I'd like to spend some time um, hearing both from you, but also letting you know about the joint degree program that Jackson uh, and SOM together offer. I'm joined today by three students who are joint degree students between Jackson and SOM. Uh, why don't I start by asking each of them to briefly uh, introduce themselves and say just a little bit about their own backgrounds. Uh, Bruno, if you could go first, uh, followed by Kendra and then Doug. Sure. Hi, everyone. Hi, Jim. Thanks a lot for everyone for coming today. I'm, my name is Bruno. I'm originally from Brazil and I came to Jackson and SOM last year. So I'm in my second out of three years of the joint degree program. Prior to coming to Yale, I was working in economic development and international development on a lot of the research side. And yeah, excited to get some questions from you all today. Hi everyone. Uh, Kendra. Hi everyone, thanks so much for coming today. Um, I'm Kendra, I'm a third year in the joint degree program, originally from here in Connecticut. And before Yale, I spent a couple of years in China doing college admissions consulting and a couple of years in New York on the product side of financial services. Uh, Doug. Hello, everyone. My name's Doug, uh, also a third year, um, you know, in my final year that sort of split between both Jackson and SOM. Uh, before coming to Yale, uh, immediately before that, I actually took some time off to backpack with my wife. Um, highly recommend that. Uh, before that, I worked at Amazon.com uh, in a vocational management training program in their operations finance division, where I moved around the country and helped run a bunch of warehouses. Excited to answer all your questions today. Thanks for coming. Uh, Bruno, Kendra, Doug, thanks so much. I thought maybe I would start by saying a little bit uh, about Jackson itself, and then uh, I'll turn back to uh, the joint degree students to offer their own views about some of these things. Um, Yale's Jackson Institute for Global Affairs is Yale's version of a school of international affairs. Uh, and in fact, the trustees have voted to transition us from uh, what in Yale parlance is an institute to being a standalone professional school over the course of the next couple of years. Uh, Jackson is a little bit different from some of our peer uh, schools of international affairs. Some of the ways in which uh, I think we are different. One obvious one is our size. Uh, Jackson is a very, uh, it's a small school. Um, we admit an incoming class of probably around 35, certainly no more than 40 students a year. Uh, that engenders a pretty tight community. We have uh, a, more, we have more faculty, I think, than we, than we do, in fact, students. Uh, our faculty also are, um, it's a little, we do things a little bit differently. We have the traditional academic faculty that you would expect at a university uh, like Yale. Uh, but we also have a number of our courses that are taught by what we call our Jackson Senior Fellows. Uh, and these are folks who have really impacted uh, the world around us. Uh, some of the Senior Fellows teaching this year would include uh, people like Stan McChrystal, John Kerry, Rory Stewart, who just stood for prime minister uh, in the UK. Um, we have, you know, at any point in time, uh, probably about a dozen uh, senior fellows who join the uh, traditional academic faculty. Uh, at Jackson, our students uh, tend to have some work experience, much like SOM. Uh, median age uh, of the students coming into Jackson is typically around 27, 28. Uh, an incoming class at Jackson is about half international. Uh, our students come from around the world uh, and they go on to do a wide, wide variety of careers. Jackson has its own standalone career services, um, student services. Uh, the students at Jackson uh, take courses, whether they are de joint degree or not, uh, typically across the university. Uh, we have tight relationships with the School of Management, but also with Yale Law School, Forestry and Environmental Studies, School of Public Health. Uh, you'll have plenty of time to, answer, to ask questions and hopefully we can answer them. 
a um, little bit later. What I'd like to do though is have each of the students, uh, again, we'll, we'll go in reverse order. So this time Doug, then Kendra, then Bruno, um, maybe talk about why you chose to do the Jackson SOM joint degree. You know, why, why was it right for you? Uh, Doug, why don't you kick this off? Sure. Um, so my work background is at Amazon uh, in finance, you know, in the tech industry, and it's a pretty fast-paced work environment. So I was quite interested in sort of continuing to, to pursue a career in business um, and thought that, MB, you know, getting the MBA at SOM would be a really good pathway to sort of continue that growth. Um, but academically, I had a very different background. I actually studied international politics and economics in undergrad at Middlebury College, along uh, with Mandarin Chinese and Spanish and things. Um, and I sort of over the course of my years at Amazon realized that I was missing a little bit of that sort of global affairs angle to my work. And so I came to Yale and decided to do a dual degree program to really ideally marry those two interests, sort of my academic background in global affairs with my work experience, you know, in the aspects of my chemistry. Um, for me, it made sense to do both uh, because I, I wanted sort of the formal core curriculum of SLM to get sort of that checklist of skills to move forward in the, in, you know, in the business world but also have sort of the academic freedom and an extra year, frankly, a uh, year and a half really to um, just explore things academically that I found interesting based on my you know, personal interests. Um, so I've really enjoyed sort of the, the structured first year curriculum at SOM along with the complete academic freedom of that project. Uh, thanks, Kendra. Absolutely. I started out at Yale only having enrolled the School of Management um, because at that point I thought I wanted to work at the business or management side of social impact. Um, but when I started school, I realized that, first of all, um, I was much more interested in economics and policy than I had expected. And then also that my interest in business was in part to build sort of skills to be well placed in my career. But also, I think I had a real curiosity about the role that the private sector can play in international affairs and development. So during my first year, excuse me, during my first year at SOM, um, I applied to the Jackson Institute um, to explore that further and develop sort of a policy perspective on business in the private sector. Uh, and Bruno. Yeah, my, my main interest in pursuing the dual degree came really from the complementarities between being able to do both the MBA and the degree at Jackson. It's, Jackson really offered me the possibility of uh, taking classes that take a step back and have a wider view of the macro trends, both in policy and economics, and really take uh, an international view, obviously, as in the name of the school, but allow you to understand and give you the tools to look at trends that go beyond just the specific company or group or project that you're going to be working on. And I think that to me was very important to be able to uh, serve myself, not only, you know, the first 10, five, 10 years after, after graduating from grad school, but really be set with, uh, with, with the vision and with the skill set to be able to, as I progress in my career, have always that, uh, that paradigm of looking at things, both from the micro side of it, having the tools to analyze something, but also having an eye towards the larger trends, towards what's the geopolitical forces that are influencing anything in a particular country in a particular context that I'm looking at. And to me, that's definitely lived up to it. And I highly recommend, uh, even if you are pursuing one or the other degree, having that, that view in mind and at the very least taking classes across the schools, because that really will help you expand that. Hey, thank you. Um, Kendra, and then I'll turn to Doug, uh, actually I'll mix it up. Kendra will start with you and then I'll turn back to Bruno and Doug will bat, uh, bat clean up. Maybe you could say a little bit about your goals after graduation and the ways in which the joint degree program um, fit with those particular goals. Yeah, absolutely. So right now I'm looking at working into a balance of finance and social impact. Um, so right now my internship is in impact investing, so I might be interested in staying that, in that field or possibly financial regulation and policy. Um, and yeah, the classes across both schools have really helped me inform that decision as well as my relationships with um, a lot of the econ and finance professors as well. Uh, Bruno, goals after graduation? Sure. So my goals after graduation are kind of carrying forward that uh, my particular interest in international finance and trade and sort of marrying that micro and micro 
and macro idea of being able to be in a position to work both in the private sector where I can work uh, that hopefully somewhere within finance to build the skills and really have the, the, the know-how of being a manager and leading these projects for a specific company, for a specific client, and hopefully also plenty of interaction with the public sector. So prior to this, I worked a lot with the public sector. I enjoyed that work very much and I hope to continue this going forward. So being able to have the understanding of how policies affect the private sector, but also still having a hand in uh, policy making and policy setting and understanding how and why different policies are set. Uh, great, and Doug, plans, uh, goals and plans after graduation? Sure, I have plenty of goals and plans. Um, and my professional ones effectively involve uh, getting involved in a field known as political risk or non-market strategy. I'm most interested in sort of helping businesses adapt to a changing geopolitical environment, you know, increasingly fractured world, um, things like that, and, and from within a company's perspective. And so over the last two summers, I actually interned in management consulting, first at the Eraser Group, which focuses explicitly on these geopolitical questions, and then later on at EY Parthenon, which is more of a traditional management consultant. Um, I'm hoping to re-enter that industry, and that's absolutely my plan. Um, and the goal is to sort of build that management consultant uh, skill set over the next few years, uh, and then ideally turn it towards more of these geostrategical uh, geostrategic business problems, either within a large company that faces them, some large multinational, you know, or continue to be a consultant. Thank you. Um, I, I'd like to next uh, one more set of questions, and then uh, I hope you'll be, those of you who are uh, per participants and, and following the webinar will send questions in uh, so that we can start to take those. Um, but before we do that, maybe each of uh, the joint degree students could say a little bit about particular classes or uh, resources uh, at Jackson uh, and SOM that you've found uh, perhaps especially helpful as you've just, you know, in pursuing the goals that you just laid out. Um, Bruno, you want to start us off? Sure. Yeah, so my, I did my first year completely at Jackson. So it's, uh, in terms of classes that I took, I had some wonderful experiences and uh, I really enjoyed, especially the smaller class size. So one, one class that I really enjoyed taking last spring was with uh, Professor Claire Lockhart, where we were really looking at the role of, uh, uh, from the academic side of looking at how reforms are structured in usually uh, transitionary governments or post-conflict states. And then we worked um, actual projects with uh, usually international organization clients or country governments at, to really apply all that knowledge that we had in very small groups. So I was particularly in a group of me and three other students uh, working in a Central American country where we really got to apply that all the theory that we were learning in class to work directly on this uh, quasi consulting project and really be able to understand how all the things we were doing in the classroom and all the examples we saw in other cases applied to a specific context and how much we have to adapt, how you can take those frameworks that you learn and really be able to build off of that. And I think that extends more broadly to many of the resources at Jackson as well. So one of the things that I most enjoyed during, during my first year were all the events that we usually have. Jackson hosts a lot of talks uh, with I, both obviously all the senior fellows, but also a lot of people who come in to talk, to give a talk either, you know, lunchtime, evening, something like that. And you cover a wide range of policy interests, a background, and that really helps you spur sort of like, all right, I hear someone's experience and I can kind of relate that to what I'm learning. I can adapt it to what else I'm doing and hone my own interest in that. So hopefully we'll have everyone back on campus and be able to have a small community and really be able to have those events that make make Jackson, Jackson, I think. Thanks, I, I know about that class you took with Claire Lockhart because uh, you guys were spread out all over the world when the pandemic broke and uh, it fell on us to figure out how to get folks from Central America, from Asia and from Africa all back to New Haven with airlines were canceling flights right and left. So I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed the class. Uh, it, it was a very cool class, even if it was a bit of an administrative nightmare last March. Um, Kendra, 
uh, classes, um, experiences that, that you might want to highlight? Yeah, absolutely. Um, since I started out at SOM, I found the core curriculum very helpful just in terms of giving me a base set of skills, a framework to address some business and global issues. Um, and then at Jackson, I really enjoyed any of the classes on finance or econ. So I took a class called Banking Crises and Financial Stability, which I loved, um, as well as International Economics and Finance. Um, I found that those classes are sort of where I discovered a blend of policy, business, social impact that makes sense for me. Um, other experiences outside of the classroom, I've taken the Global Social Entrepreneurship course where I went to India with a small group of students and worked with an educational nonprofit and I really loved it and I also felt like it gave me an opportunity to take what I learned at SOM and at Jackson and apply it to everyday life at an organization. Um, and the last thing I'll mention is I've gone on a couple of career treks. The Jackson Institute went to DC last year and then through SOM, the Economic Development Club career trek to New York City. And I found those, both of those to be very helpful in terms of getting to know particular organizations and different types of potential careers. Uh, and Doug. Sure, I actually have two classes I wanna talk about. The first is mostly an SOM class that I took while at Jackson. <laughs> um, and it, it's the same one that Kendra just mentioned. It's called Global Social Entrepreneurship India. Um, it's a really interesting course. It's effectively a consulting project where you work with other Yale grad students uh, to help a nonprofit in India sort of you know, solve a management problem that they're facing. Um, it has a unique timeline in that it doesn't equally or doesn't neatly align to one semester or the other. You actually start in October and end in March. So um, in that December break in between, uh, my, my group actually traveled to India and was able to go on the ground and sort of meet the client and understand the problem they were facing. And it was one of the most meaningful experiences I've had. Um, I love being in the classroom and learning about things academically, but you know, I'm in two professional schools and, and enjoy being a professional and solving problems in the real world. And at the time, GSC India really seemed like the, the best possible way to, to sort of put those skills to the test. Um, the second is actually a seminar I'm taking at Jackson this semester. Uh, it has a really long name, but it's focused on Russian disinformation. Um, and we look at the 2016 US election as sort of a case study, but study sort of disinformation efforts uh, writ large. Um, and it's been really interesting to sort of dig into uh, what aspects of tech policy sort of enable these problems um, and sort of the history of the issues. And I've just really enjoyed this small, intimate, um, sort of discussion-based class, uh, which has actually been excellent over Zoom. I sort of had initial concerns about that. But when you have such a small community and people know each other um, and the topic is so interesting, I found it to be really engaging. Um, I will repeat another of Kendra's points because she made excellent ones. You should all listen to her. Um, the Washington DC uh, job trek that Jackson organizes in the fall was instrumental for me. I came in very interested in political risk. Um, and DC is unsurprisingly a huge uh, hub, global hub for that industry. And I was able to not only go to the panels that Jackson set up formally, but also uh, sort of more in my own network with people in the city uh, you know, through connections that um, Jackson's career services person put me in touch with. Uh, to really learn more about the industry. Those have been really meaningful uh, sort of learning experiences for me as I explore professional choices. Fantastic. Um, why don't we turn now to questions uh, from uh, webinar participants. Um, I'll take the first one. You guys have been doing lots of the talking. Uh, and someone asked, what support does the Jackson Institute provide uh, and they noted it's a relatively new school and is that a positive or a negative um, so I'll, I'll take that one um, Jackson Institute uh, by support I, I'm going to interpret that as financial support uh, Jackson supports um, almost all of our students actually uh, the degree of support changes I think this year though um, was the first year in which uh, all every student at Jackson received uh, some, if not complete, uh, support. So support varies from uh, tuition discounts to uh, complete tuition waivers to no tuition and we'll pay you uh, a stipend while you're there. So the uh, financial support uh, provided by Jackson is, uh, is pretty generous actually. Uh, one of the nice things uh, about being small is that we are very well resourced and we use those resources to in large part support our students. Uh, and then the follow on to that was 
Jackson's a relatively new school. Is that a positive or a negative? Um, I've thought a lot about that uh, over the course of the time. Um, and to me, it's clearly a positive. Uh, it's a positive be for a few reasons. Um, it's a positive because we, in starting from scratch, we've been able to create the School of International Affairs that I think is exactly right uh, for this moment. We didn't inherit a particular model. Uh, we were able to design it from scratch. And for example, the integration with Yale's other professional schools has been built in from the beginning. The uh, integration of both the practical and the academic, uh, and by the academic, I mean traditional uh, tenure track ladder faculty, as well as our senior fellows. You know, the course Doug was just talking about, I think was taught by a former FBI agent, the Russian disinformation course. Uh, bringing, bringing those senior fellows into the classroom, um, we do that probably more than our, than our peers. Uh, and I, I think it works beautifully. You know, why might being a new school be a disadvantage? And I, I think that possible disadvantage is, well, if you're new, do employers really know about it? Um, and we've been aware of that from the get-go. We've invested heavily at Jackson in career resources. Uh, and I think the evidence speaks for itself. Uh, the placement rate, pl well, uh, my director of career services hates it when I use the word placement. Uh, the employment rate of folks um, you know, six months out who have found this kind of jobs that they want to do, it's about 100%. Um, because we're small and because we have an amazing network to draw upon, uh, and because I'm not bashful and, and my colleagues are not bashful about using that network, uh, I think we've been able to more than overcome and in fact thrive uh, on the professional placement side um, or on the career development side. Uh, so, the newness, you know, the, the potential disadvantage of, of, of being a new school uh, that we recognized from the outset had to do with, you know, will employers recognize uh, the Jackson degree? And, and turns out they do, most definitely. Um, I'm going to turn to uh, to the students. Uh, it was, and maybe each of you could offer some advice on this one. Uh, what are the qualities of a student who thrives as a Jackson SOM joint degree student? It's a great question. Uh, Doug, you're, okay, I'm going to start with you. Okay, uh, joint degree student, he probably wrote his application while backpacking in some, you know, off the grid somewhere. Uh, what kind of student uh, thrives in the joint degree program? And then uh, maybe Kendra and Bruno, you could offer up that. Yeah, it's, it's an excellent question because the two degrees are in fact quite different. Um, I'm seeing some questions in the Q&A about the sequencing um, and I can answer those off the bat. Um, uh, generally you do one year at program A, one year at program B, and then your third year, one semester at A, one semester at B. If you're accepted to both programs right off the bat, you start at Jackson by default, although you can apply if you're only accepted to SOM or and you apply to SOM um, and be admitted to Jackson later. And they're very different experiences. Um, my Jackson class is about 30 people. So I'm class, so I'm going to bump up a number, but you know, 300. Um, it's it's you know, an order of magnitude larger. And so I'll, I'll sort of divide the question into two parts and answer them separately. SOM, what makes a you know a thriving, successful SOM student? The ability to jump in and do a lot of very short courses on a wide variety of topics uh, over the course of the first year. Um, you've got to be nimble, you've got to be flexible, and you've got to work well in teams. The entire first year curriculum, not the entire, the majority of the first year curriculum. Um, is, in, is learning team-based, and so you've really got to practice those teamwork skills. It's also, at least in comparison to Jackson, a much larger environment, and so uh, it takes a little bit more work and more intention to build those connections and, you know, seek out the right clubs and, you know, interest groups um, so that you make your community. I think it's quite easy in comparison to other business schools, at least from what I hear based on, uh, from my peers, um, but it's just a larger sort of more uh, self-directed uh, experience. And so you've got to you know, go through the core uh, while also finding what interests you and seeking those opportunities out, mostly from a recruiting perspective. Jackson um, is almost the polar opposite in that like there are only three required classes 
two of them you take in your first fall, one of them you take in your spring, and then you know the other courses that you take at Yale are up to you. Um, and so you don't have that core experience to the same sort of uh, large degree that you get at, at, at SOM. And so Jackson students need to come in knowing what they're interested in or having a very open mind and, and not being afraid of the choice. Um, at SOM, you're, it's sort of told to you that you need to do this core curriculum, which I believe in, um, but that absolves you of some choices for basically a year. At Jackson, your very first semester, you're making those choices about what do you prioritize? Do you want to take a class, you know, a consulting clinic, like um, the one Bruno was mentioning or the one that Kendra and I mentioned, or do you want to, you know, take a language class? Uh, you've got to make those trade-offs from day one, and I think it behooves you to really think about what your goals are post-graduation or what your goals are while you're in school to make sure you're seeking out those opportunities. Finally, on the Jackson side, um, as there's only 30 people per year, maybe 60, 70, you know, in the entire program, um, the ability to make deep relationships um, and function in a small community where everyone knows each other and the flow of information is uh, very free is, is a really key factor, I think. Uh, Kendra, do you, do you want to weigh in on any, anything that, that Doug said in terms of, you know, what kind of student thrives with the joint degree program? Yeah, absolutely. That gave a really, really great in-depth answer. I'll go a little bit big picture, I guess. Um, I think primarily because Jackson, the um, core curriculum is a little bit more flexible. I think that the joint degree is really what you make of it. And because of that, the types of people who thrive here, it's not one type of person. We're all so different and there are different ways to thrive in the joint degree program. But I think just to echo what Doug mentioned, um, to really have goals and priority, priorities during these three years is really important. Um, but also just like curiosity, flexibility, desire to try new things. I think you have three years, which is a really great aspect of the joint degree program. So you have a little bit more time to explore. Great. Um, looking at, at, at some of the questions that are coming up. Um, Kendra, while you're on it, there's a question uh, that that was asked of you, but it, it turns out to be, I think, relevant for the three of you. Um, what was the process for applying to Jackson midstream at SOM? Um, Bruno, I could turn it around to, to you or to Doug and say, what was the uh, process for applying uh, from Jackson midstream to SOM? Um, as opposed to going the other direction, and is there advantage to do? Is there an advantage to uh, applying to the joint degree program from the outset, or do you think it makes sense to start one and then consider? The process for applying to Jackson in my first year, I think, was pretty much the same as what most students or applicants do before they apply to both schools during the joint degree program. So sent in an application around, I think it was December, January, um, and then heard in the spring. The only additional thing is one short essay about why you want to apply to the joint degree program. Um, and then, um, what was the second question, Jim? Sorry. Yeah, you know, is there an advantage to um, applying to the joint degree from the outset? Uh, some of you uh, started in one program uh, and then decided to, you know, to apply to the joint degree. Uh, is that, you know, is there an advantage to doing it uh, jointly from the beginning? Um, and what are your thoughts on that? Okay, great. Yeah, I won't speak to admissions, obviously, but I personally felt so much more comfortable and confident in my career goals after having that first few months at SOM. So I really think it's just a personal decision. And if you know your story and you know what you want to do, even before applying, I mean, when you're ready to apply, that's really when you should do it, I think. Uh, Bruno, do you want to weigh in on that? Yeah, I'm definitely going to echo what Kendra said. And I think the optimal timing is when you're ready to apply. So go, going the other way from, you know, doing the first year at Jackson and then during that year applying to SOM, exact same thing in terms of deadlines of the process. It would be, I think, the exact same application uh, that you would do if you're just applying from outside of Yale completely. So there's very little difference in that. It's just, I think the advantage of uh, applying to both of them at once and hopefully, you know, per getting in and pursuing both of them from the get go is that you have a little bit more uh, of an idea of like what your next three years will be like. So let's say 
you can plan your classes a little bit better if you know you'll have two additional years as opposed to one additional year if there's stuff that conflicts you can plan that out a little bit but i don't think that makes uh, a huge difference because you know either way you'll get even if you come to one program one year first and then you'll still have two years after to pursue the other one so it really should be whenever you feel comfortable and when you know you want to pursue either one of these programs because that is also just going to help you have the best case to make two admissions and uh, if you really know you want to do it it'll be much easier to explain why you want to do it and more importantly why you want to do both of them i think that's you know much easier once you're here to get a better sense of the complementarity but if you know from off the bat from before getting to yale that you definitely want to pursue both then i would say go for it great uh, there's a question here uh, with a little bit of, of side commentary. Uh, it's from somebody who say they say that they actually went to high school with Kendra. Um, <laughs> uh, so uh, there's a shout out there. Um, and this person asks, and I, I think I'll I'll take this initially, and then I'll ask uh, the students to to weigh in. Um, you know, would I say that Jackson is geared more toward global development, diplomacy, or defense? Um, and my take on that is it's, it's pretty much equal across all of those, and I would add in uh, climate policy and environmental issues too, as well as global health. Uh, it's a small, Jackson being small, and as the students have mentioned, incoming class of you know, roughly 35 or so students, um, and we intentionally take students who are coming from all of those backgrounds. Um, of the American students who are admitted to Jackson, uh, I'd say more than half of them have either served as Peace Corps volunteers or in the military. Um, very different backgrounds, but there is a focus uh, on, on public service uh, in both of those. Uh, Jackson students have typically lived and worked in complicated places in many, in many instances. Um, a number of the Jackson students expect to follow up careers uh, on the diplomacy front. Uh, the folks who come in from the military in some cases continue there. Um, some of them move into the intelligence communities. A lot of our students continue to work uh, in, on the development side of things. Uh, and sometimes that's traditional development, sometimes it's in some cases more on, on the global health side. Uh, so the program is, I would say, fairly spread out uh, across all of those. I don't think it's really geared toward any particular career path, uh, one more than the other. Um, but, you know, I'd like to have the students sort of weigh in on, um, you know, what, what their views on that might be. Um, Bruno, do you want to, you want to kick that off? Sure. Yeah, I think by the nature of uh, each admitted class at Jackson being smaller, so being in that 30 to 40 range, uh, no two classes are going to be the same. So every class that comes in, you're going to have a different balance of uh, backgrounds, of interests, of future career goals. And the admissions team does a really good job of blending that together. So you really do get that mix. But every year it's going to be different. And the good part of that is that, you know, you're coming in and you're going to learn so much from all the other people. So even if you come in with an idea, you know, I, I want to pursue a diplomatic path afterwards, I want to join the Foreign Service, you will, you know, get the great experience for that. But you'll also learn a lot from your uh, from your cohort, from your classmates while pursuing other classes and see what their take is on these things. Uh, the, I guess, somewhat downside to having this like wide breadth of it is that you can more easily get uh, lost in all the things that are available to you. So I think it's crucial in a program that's like this, that's very independence driven for you to there's plenty of room to explore, but to have like a drive of like, what do I want to develop? What do I want to pursue in terms of skills, in terms of knowledge. And you can do that across any of these areas because there are courses, as Jim mentioned, there's a ton of faculty and senior fellows and the, the courses available are really give you that wide breadth of interest. And so it's what do you build out of it? You can build any one of these categories. You can build something in public health and uh, global development. You can build something in, in national security, but it's up to you to build that. So you do, it does require more active uh, initiative on your part. Okay. Um, 
in a minute, I'm going to ask uh, some of the students to weigh in on what have been the major challenges, if any, in balancing the academics at both Jackson and SOM. So while you think about uh, that, let me answer a question. Uh, someone asked if there's a prevailing format for Jackson classes, and does it differ significantly from SOM? Um, actually, yeah, it does. Uh, Jackson classes tend to be small. Um, you know, this semester, uh, as we've adapted our in-person teaching to the pandemic, I think, uh, I think it was 24 of our 26 classes this semester uh, are seminars with 16 or fewer students. Uh, that's, you know, that's not uncommon. Uh, the Jackson classes tend to be uh, quite small, uh, much more intimate, uh, easier to form a community. Uh, our classes tend to be uh, mostly seminars, not all. Uh, we do have some lecture classes, uh, but the format is, is different than SOM. Uh, I'm on the faculty at both Jackson and SOM, uh, and my SOM classes uh, tend to be, I te teach or have taught in the core, and, and those are gonna be classes uh, more, you know, in the range of 70 or 75 students uh, in, a, in a normal year. So the, the classes at Jackson are more seminar oriented um, and, and, and tend to be smaller. Uh, let me turn to, have there been sort of special challenges uh, to doing the joint degree program um, and ask you, you know, obviously, you know, Doug, I can, I can start with you. you know, Yale's a pretty serious place academically. So, you know, classes aren't easy, I get that. But have there been special challenges uh, that, the joint degree uh, has has posed, and then maybe I'll bring that up back to you, Kendra. It's an excellent question. Um, as Jen mentioned, the, the two schools are, are wildly different, mostly just in terms of scale. Um, my first year at Jackson, my average class size was maybe 12, 15. Um, and my first year at SOM, I took all of my courses with my uh, cohort, which is a group of 70. Um, so it's, it's extremely different. I'd say um, the experience is different. Both are difficult or, or, or easy, however you want to say, in their own ways. Um, I think the challenge uh, you know, is, is adapting to a new context. For me, being an Jackson student, I was used to sort of the academic flexibility of taking whatever I wanted and being very self-driven. Then you come in SOM and there's sort of a core curriculum lined up in front of you that you have to, to go through, which is something I signed up for and wanted, but nonetheless felt very different. Um, Academically, I can't say that there's uh, a huge difference in the level of difficulty. They just test different types of things. Um, I think the, a lot of the difficulties are, are perhaps social. Um, and I would look to what Bruno and Kendra have to say here. Um, but I think a joint degree student a few years above me explained it really well. So you come in your first year and you bond with one group of people. In my case, it was Jackson, a group of 30 or 60. Um, and then that next year I come in as an SOM student and I still have all my Jackson friends, but I'm part of a new community of, you know, 70 people in a cohort that are experiencing Yale for the first time. And while you can invite both people to your house at the same time, and that happens all the time and it's great, um, you, you can only be in one place at a time. And so I found that in the second year in particular, which I just recently finished in May, um, I, I sort of had to be very intentional about how I was splitting my time between Jackson and SOM. Socially, I can't say that I achieved the perfect balance, and I doubt anyone does, but it, it's something that was a little bit uh, like required more thought than I originally anticipated. Academically, they're just different in terms of scale and skills tested, um, but I wouldn't say one is meaningfully more difficult than the other. Um, to Jim's point, you also see your spot, and uh, you know, you'll pick classes that challenge you, um, or you won't, and that's totally up to you, and it's up to you to really choose beyond those required courses what you want to do and how you want to be challenged, whether that class falls under the law school or the school of the environment or, or Jackson or SOM, that's up to you once you're done with your core requirements. Uh, Bruno, do you want to weigh in on weigh in on that? Sure, yeah, I think my one quick addition to that would be, I think the large challenge like Doug mentioned is uh, in knowing what you're missing out at the other school. So, by just being at one school, both socially, but also academically, uh, you kind of all your friends and people you're taking classes, but they're all taking sort of similar things. So you know what's going on in terms of events, in terms of what classes are available. Uh, but you know, once you add the second degree in there, now you have two groups of people, you have two groups of uh, classmates which are taking very different classes. And then you're kind of juggling that in between, being like, oh, I 
really want to go to that cool event, but I have this other event that might be at the same time and they overlap. And similarly with classes, you, you have one extra year, but there's still too many classes and you won't be able to take all of them. So it's, that is a challenge in knowing like what to prioritize when you have that much more option. And I think it's a good problem to have. It's definitely, I'd much rather have this problem than not have enough options, but it does require a little bit more thought uh, each semester to be like, all right, what are my goals? both socially and more importantly, academically in terms of picking my classes and who I want to meet and uh, what do I want to do this semester. Thanks. Uh, there was a question about what type of internship opportunities Jackson students typically take. Um, I'm guessing you all know, you can speak to the types that you've done and you know what many of your colleagues have done. So I'll uh, turn to you with that in just a second. Uh, but the follow on was, does Jackson uh, have uh, the, the, what does Jackson do to support students' careers is, is the way that uh, the question has been put to me. Uh, and I should point out, although Jackson is small with a graduating class of only about 35 students, we have a full-time uh, career services office. Uh, so uh, all, every single Jackson student uh, meets one-on-one -on -one with the director of career services. Uh, and that starts on day one at Jackson. Uh, during orientation, uh, we start uh, with a focus on career services. And that's because Jackson's a professional school. And our goal is to make sure that the time spent at Jackson furthers the students' career goals. Uh, it's a great program. Students, I think, really enjoy it. They make a wonderful set of, of, of connections that I think will serve them through the course of their life. Uh, but at its heart, the goal is to move your career forward. And we've invested very heavily uh, in that. Uh, so yeah, there, there's a lot of support uh, and services that are, that are made available. Those show up with career talks, uh, meeting with uh, recruiters. Uh, one of the differences there at Jackson is you know, that's done in very, very small groups. So you would be typically going to a career lunch with maybe five or six other students uh, and, and the other person, whereas I think the scale is probably a little different uh, at SLM. Uh, internship opportunities. Um, all of the students at, at Jackson and SLM do internships between their ear. Do you guys want to say a little bit about what you and, and some of the others have done? Um, and I'll turn, I, I guess, first to you, Kendra, on that, uh, and, and then to Doug, since you've both been, been around a little bit longer than Bruno. Um, a follow-on question before I turn to you is they asked whether Jackson has relationships with the World Bank, UN agencies, and the like, and the answer there is yes. Uh, our students, uh, because it's a pretty small program and it's highly selective, we get just amazingly talented students. And uh, we found that a number of the organizations that have hired our students for permanent jobs as well as internships have been keen to establish uh, pipelines as it were. Uh, Kendra, internships. Absolutely. Um, my first year, I knew it was going to be my first internship at two, so I took the time to sort of explore a totally new industry and a new country. Um, I worked at a tech firm in Bangalore, India. And then this past summer, trying to angle myself a little bit more into finance with the social impact side, I've been doing impact investing with a firm in Bethesda, Maryland. Bangalore and Bethesda, it's quite the combo. <laughs> uh, Doug, you want to say, you, you mentioned a little bit, but you want to follow up on uh, internships. And also, if you know of the types of internships that some of your other uh, fellow joint degree students uh, or Jackson students might be, be doing, could weigh in on that. Sure. Uh, I think the first thing I'll say is that statistics relies on like a large sample size and Jackson's really small. So you just fundamentally don't have that sample size. So like what does the typical Jackson student do is like just a nonsensical question. You should just ask what did Jack do? What did Jenny do? You know, like we really think more about individuals. And I will say that um, looking at all of my classmates, uh, you know, over the years that I've been at Jackson, um, they've done wildly different things. Um, you know, I, I personally, as I mentioned, had an interest in sort of geopolitical risk consulting uh, when I came in. Um, and so I, you know, during my first year at Jackson, uh, used the career services department, Elizabeth was great. Um, and, and she sort of helped me do my own self-directed search. I did a lot of networking within sort of this industry that I was exploring and ended up finding my internship at the Eurasia Group um, in New York City working on a small team there, which I love. 
Um, this past year that I just finished in May at SOM was a totally different experience. Um, in contrast to having a group of 60, you know, students that, that sort of run their own internship searches, you know, due to their personal interests, SOM has, you know, a thousand people in the organization and they sort of have the scale to bring employers to you for different types of career events. And I took advantage of that very different system to do the consult management, consulting, recruiting process, joined the consulting club, um, went to a bunch of coffee chats, company presentations and things, and this past summer interned virtually uh, in a very 2020 way. Uh, at EY Parthenon, also in New York City. Um, so I've had two internships nominally in consulting, nominally both in, in New York City. Um, but the process to get there and the experience there was also quite different. Um, so I'll say that I've had really good experiences, you know, both years, two for two, um, but the experience is quite different. Um, and, and I think you've got to recognize that going in, that sort of if you're at SOM, you know, since you're a group of a thousand, employers sort of come to SOM in a more generic sense and you can sort of sit back and watch in some way, although a lot of active participation is required to actually get the internship. At Jackson, um, as Jim mentioned, there are, there are a ton of events that come. And, I mean, there are people that are on campus or do virtual events this year, um, but the scale is much smaller. And so it's much easier to go to an event and have lunch, you know, just a group of five students with somebody, you know, in a career office, you know, at a particular company and make that personal connection. But there just aren't quite as many of them. Okay, uh, last question. I'm going to ask it to ask each of the uh, uh, joint degree students to, to answer this. Uh, what advice do you have for prospective candidates? And what do you wish you'd known uh, when you were applying? Bruno, you want to, that's a hard one. You want to kick that off and then Doug and then Kendra can wrap it up. Sure, I'll try to kick it off and then Doug and Kendra can give better advice from more experience. I think my one main advice would be to really think about how you're going to join these two degrees. So it, what, what's your purpose behind like pursuing both degrees? So both of them offer some flexibility, uh, you know, whichever one you're in, you can kind of take classes at the other, but really think about like why you want to join the two. And that'll help you first of all, during your admissions process, your application, your essays, having thought about that will make it, you know, appear much more clear and make you seem much more motivated uh, in your application materials. But it's also gonna be really helpful to you to realize what your goals are, uh, what you want coming out of these schools, what, how it'll balance, uh, so how each of the resources available at each one of them will help you meet those goals. And ultimately when you hopefully arrive on campus, it'll also help you pick your classes and choose what, what you wanna do while you're on here. Because while, uh, there's so much interesting things going on all the time. You can't do all of it. So it doesn't matter if you're here for two, three, four, ten years. I don't, I don't, don't think Jim has done everything available yet at Jackson. So having some focus before you get here and while you're applying will really help you and your application. Uh, Doug, advice? Strongly agree with Bruno. Um, I think, you know, from your shoes, perhaps as applicants, you know, the big question in mind, or at least for me, was how do I get into Yale? Um, and then as soon as you get into Yale, your question is like, wow, what do I do? Um, and I think that you should, you should optimize for that second question. Really think about what you want to do, why each of the two degrees um, uh, would help you get where you want to go. Um, I took a lot of time to really think about my career interests, understand the type of people that do the types of things that I want to do and sort of the, the, the backgrounds that those people have. And what I identified was that these people have generally a business background, most often an MBA, but they also have a deep you know, expertise in global affairs or regional studies, something to that effect. So I sort of identified that both degrees would be really important to me, um, you know, in, in helping me move forward with my career. Um, and I would encourage you to just really think ahead to, you know, what is it that you're interested in doing for your career and what role will both Jackson and SOM, or alternatively, just one of the two, the joint degree, frankly, isn't for everyone. Um, you know, how, how will that degree or degrees get you where you want to go? Um, and I think that the more, cl the, the clearer you have that picture of your future in your mind, um, the more that will come through in your application and, and, and the better your experience would be um, if you were to actually go. And Kendra, uh, you wanna, what advice might, might you have? And you know, as someone who started at SOM, you kind of had to think hard, okay, what's the value added proposition of, of doing the joint degree with Jackson? Maybe you could offer some advice there. Yeah, absolutely. I think 
my reason for doing that was pretty similar to what Doug and Bruno had mentioned that I thought through like my story and I thought what I wanted to do with my career and why I would need this extra degree, which it was, it's really important to who I am and what my career is, um, would be hopefully. <laughs> and so my word of advice is just to echo what Doug and Bruno said to really think through your story and why you need your degree. Um, and what types of experiences are going to help you get there. So it's not just the name of the degree. It's like, what types of classes do you want to take? Who are the professors that you want to talk with? What type of network do you want to have? Um, and really think through what is the right school for me, for you, for that perspective. Thanks. Uh, Bruno, Doug, Kendra, thank you so very, very much for participating. To all of the participants, thanks so much for taking time to learn about the joint degree program. And I really would encourage you uh, to apply uh, if you think it makes sense. Uh, both SOM and Jackson are fantastic institutions. And personally, I think that the combination is even greater uh, than the sum of the parts. So uh, to all of you, thanks. Uh, stay well, stay involved, and I hope we hear from you. Bye-bye.